Can I just say what is probably an uncomfortable truth to golf guy? That means you, Dan Byer. Um, Dan, by the way, I got I was up early yesterday, and he and Mike Harmon did did a show, did their show, did a special show live from LA Country Club. And uh, you want to talk about? I love guys that want it bad, that love what they do, and that Dan was up. They I, they got in a shuttle at five o'clock in the morning. Is that right, Dan? Yes, that is true, Doug. Five a.m. For a 6 a.m. show. That's local time. Obviously, if you're East Coast, you're like, what's the big deal? He's on at 9 in the morning. Like, no, it's 5 a.m. here. <laughs> and he doesn't live right next to L.A. Country Club. I'm guessing you probably woke up at 4, got there at 5. Is that about right? 3.45, yes. Okay, 3.45, got there at 5. So, But you were bright-eyed, bushy-tailed. Okay, so the complaints about the golf course is what? It was too easy? It's too much of just a... Just that a was the complaints of- the first couple of days. And then it was the crowds. Then it was... Um, then it was, it didn't feel like a U.S. Open. Um, that, and then that, there was the buzzing sound of that plane that was overhead. Yeah, and I was oblivious to it. I had no idea. Oh, gosh. I was sitting there doing the swat net flies thing. I was like, what? Is that my ear? Is that my ear? And then somebody tweeted out, I don't know, it was a Ravel. It was like, no, it's really a plane overhead. You're like, oh, thank God. I just thought I was hearing things. Um, I would say that, like, if we're trying to point fingers at if something went wrong, I think there's one guy to point fingers at and it's Tiger Woods. I just, I'm, this is the world that Tiger create. We're so used to Tiger and then, you know, Phil, and we're used to these rock stars on a golf course and all of the different factors that could have heard it, I thought heard it. One, it's in L.A., which is really cool. And the big buildings in the background, like I, I thought the visuals on TV, I thought it was great. Uh, but it's at a place that they hadn't been and they didn't trick it up because they thought, hey, no course knowledge. The, the course will be hard enough on, on its own. And it, the course did stand up the last couple of days. Uh, But I mean, like, look, it just feels like the reason that golf is different is there's no Tiger Woods and then there's no Phil either. Right. Those two changed golf, especially Tiger. And yes, the LACC buying up half the tickets. And yes, it being kind of hard to get to, even though right, it's in the middle of things. Um, And and the course being kind of eh, and the crowd being kind of eh. But I think it all comes down to Tiger. Like if Tiger Woods, if if you go back 10 years ago and Tiger Woods is in the field on a Sunday in the hunt, that place is on fire. It wasn't yesterday. Am I crazy? Um, Yeah, I think you are. I think that you're very crazy. It's like I can't believe I didn't win Powerball again. I can't believe I I won it. I won two point two billion dollars eight years ago or 20 years ago. How come I didn't win Powerball again? Like that's Tiger is, was such a. I mean, he was so huge, and it's. But as we argued last week, I think we're in the post Tiger era. No question. I, I think that there is. I think that there is. You had probably the most popular player in the game today in contention for eighteen holes yesterday, and to me, it's just people's decision to like i sorry i may be golf guy here yeah. um rory mcelroy not getting it done on a sunday and not being able to make a birdie putt or ricky fowler who was the poster child for you know um sponsorships and ads and the young you know the young talent but now he's past that point in his career trying to win a major those were intriguing storylines. Now, I may be golf guy, and those may be intriguing, but, you know, Bradley Beal to the Suns is a big deal because I think NBA Twitter ends up making it a big deal. I don't know how many people actually watched Wizards games last year to have any sense of what Bradley Beal does, but it takes up a lot of air. To have Rory McIlroy in a final, you know, the final two groups and not be able to get it done, and how he bogeyed 14... I just think people made up their mind that they weren't going to care or weren't going to be interested in it. And then they decided to pick out reasons why. I agree with you. I agree. I, I actually, and maybe I didn't articulate it well enough, but I think the reason they weren't interested is because 
uh, the post Tiger thing. I think that's what happened after Jordan. Like we like what here's what people forget about that that very few people mention is that in prime Michael Jordan or end of Michael Jordan's career, the NBA was actually bigger than the NFL. And if you look at the ratings, what's changed is that obviously fantasy football and gambling, now legalized gambling, has really helped propel football. Plus the way football just fits into our schedule, um, the NFL Sunday ticket and red zone, like all of that stuff helps. But the big thing was that we just picked out reasons to blame that we weren't going to watch basketball, mostly because Michael Jordan wasn't playing. That, that that I mean I I truly believe that right okay. and and was scoring down yeah scoring was down and it was it was low but I I actually watched something I was watching a bunch of stuff uh, yesterday I think yesterday was the anniversary of Kobe's last championship right and they beat the they beat the the Boston Celtics and wasn't the score like ninety two eighty seven or something like it was low scoring that was. And granted, the three point shot was not used as much as it is now, but we had we had low we've had low scoring games even since they took hand checking out. But it felt like if you go back to the early two thousands, you know, two thousand three was the lowest rated NBA Finals ever, right? It was Nets versus Spurs. We just found reasons to not want to watch. You're like, oh, the Spurs are boring, and the Nets are not the Knicks, and whatever. I'm not disputing that the Rory used that was a story. That Ricky, as you and I discussed, like you, I thought you, you you said it on this show and you said it on your show yesterday, which is we've gone from Ricky being the best player to never won one to kind of an afterthought because he's not really considered one of the best players anymore, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, there were great there were great storylines in the NBA in the early two thousands, um, but for whatever reason, we just chose to pick our own reason why we wouldn't watch and yeah it feels like golf is that is in that place because we expect we're so used to tiger I, and we don't have tiger i could also accept someone saying you know it really wasn't wasn't that exciting because rory had 16 pars couldn't make a putt uh birdie the first hole bogey the 16th and that was that was his round like you could say it wasn't exciting because of the scores on the course. There wasn't a you know an ever changing leaderboard. All of that. I just got the sense that people just chose not to watch or do other things, or just looked at it from afar, and they were lucky that it wasn't a great event because they wouldn't have been able to catch up on it. Golf fans, I think, understand that. All right, no, Wyndham Clark is not going to bring in the audience. Uh, but I just think people dismissing it, and I felt like people were dismissing it all weekend long, not just even yesterday for the final round or coming today, even in some of the stuff that we had heard on Thursday and Friday. And that's the thing that's frustrating to me as a as a golf fan is it's just being dismissed. And that was the sense that I got. And maybe it is because it's not Tiger, but I think that that's a them problem and not a golf problem because – Tiger Woods is that Powerball ticket. There's just not going to be another one of him around again. Completely agree on that. There's no no question at all. 